Thank you, Kim. I'm excited to uh, share with the uh, greater Manchester area here in New Hampshire, as well as uh, those of us at the University Center, our fellow staff and faculty, and of course the students, that uh, in my class, two weeks from today, that would be a Wednesday, it reads here, November 12th at 1 p.m., I'm excited to uh, present a very special and timely topic entitled The Black Death, The Great Plague in uh, Art and History. And I've written down here the sort of catchwords that are so familiar to us today on the uh, contemporary the television news, epidemic, pandemic, and quarantine. Huh? Uh, no, actually not today, many hundreds of years ago when our world was something more than half a thousand years younger in Europe's Middle Ages. Yeah, quarantine. We are really uh, uh, learning more and more about that and we uh, are watching on the television news the considerations that are given to those who fly back to the United States or enter the United States from West Africa. And quarantine is an institution of medical uh, isolation that reaches back to a time about half a dozen hundred years ago. In the great plague of Europe's later Middle Ages, it was our Venetian ancestors, these very Christian Italians on the Adriatic Sea of Italy's northern coast, who uh, realized first off for us the value of uh, the, the prophylactic value of isolating the healthy portion of the population from those who'd contracted the disease. And they set those people on an island out in the lagoon, and being good Christians, they looked back to scripture uh, for the precedent, the time duration of isolation. And the number 40 is replete still today throughout the Old and the New Testament. It was uh, 40 days and 40 nights that the biblical flood lasted, and Moses led the Israelites through the wilderness for 40 years. In the New Testament, after Jesus' baptism by John in the Jordan, he spent 40 days in the wilderness. And we could go on and on and on about the precedent of 40 as a time of trial and tribulation. So those Venetian ancestors in the 15th century realized they had that time fixed at 40. And that's what they did. And the Italian word for 40 back then was, as it remains still today, quaranta. And this is the historic origins and beginnings of our medicinal uh, uh, isolation, uh, which we call, after that Italian word for, for 40, quaranta, we call it quarantina. That's the historic origins of all this matter, which has become so familiar and so intimate to our concerns uh, today. And I want to uh, conclude this, if I still have a, another moment, to read what we're going to be showing at 1 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon on the 12th of November at the uh, University Center here in Manchester on Commercial Street in Rome 350. It will begin at 1 o'clock and go until 4 o'clock. We'll have a seventh inning stretch. I won't keep people in the seats for three. Uh, hours. It will be richly illustrated, and uh, I think my students, when they saw this last some number of years ago, they described it as a Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, let me just read a couple of lines here, and then we'll, we'll close on this announcement. The Black Death, as the Great Plague of the Middle Ages came to be called, was the worst epidemic ever to befall man, and the greatest natural disaster in history. I suppose there are many who would reckon the biblical flood that was uh, demographically more complete than the Great Plague, rather supernatural. But the greatest natural disaster certainly is that plague, the so-called Black Death of the later Middle Ages. For generations, Europe experienced unimaginable suffering. And with death, such a constant companion, mores and inhibitions collapsed. Social aberrances manifest during the age of the Black Death are as much a chapter of social history as of history and uh, must be understood in the reality of apocalyptic misery. That misery was expressed with haunting visual detail 
in the art which was produced in the period of the Great Plague, and that's what we're going to be looking at. I hope we'll have an interested public. Thanks, Kim.